This is our second lab on 2 Timothy 2, 24 to 26, and I said last time that this passage of Scripture, in my experience over the last 30 or 40 years, has proved to be one of the most helpful in helping me get a handle on the relationship between the sovereignty of God in saving and changing people on the one hand, and my responsibility to be an agent in that change on the other hand, as a pastor or a dad or a friend. And so we're going to look at the human side of this now, because last time we focused on the divine side. So Father, as we wrap this up in this second half, show all of us, our indispensable place in the sovereign work of your hand and your heart in saving and sanctifying your people. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read the whole thing to get it before us. The Lord's servant, that's us, and that's what I'm thinking about today. What's our role? The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to one, to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God, this is what we looked at last time, God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and they may come to to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. And last time, we simply observed that God gives repentance, this deep heart, soul, mind change, which leads to a true knowledge of the truth beyond the knowledge that unbelievers and unrepentant can have to a true perception of the value and preciousness of truth. Another way to describe this repentance is that we come to our senses, we wake up from the stupor, we overcome our blindness, we get sober after being drunken on the deceptions of the devil and thus escape from the snare of the devil, a snare which consists in deception, not in binding our hands. And so the deception is overcome with a knowledge of the truth which is rooted in a coming to our senses which is described as repentance and we escape from the capture of the devil not to do his will any longer but to do God's will. And the big question is since God is the one who gives all that decisively does the deepest work that frees us to know and to be sober and to escape what's the role of the human agency, our role as a a, a mom or a dad or a friend or a pastor. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. So one two, three, four, five traits that the Lord's servant is to have evidently as part of God's action in granting repentance. So notice, notice three aspects to this. First, notice this. When God grants repentance— And it leads to knowledge. A knowledge of what? Truth. Where did that come from? When God grants repentance, he doesn't speak all the gospel into their souls as though they could do without a preacher. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of of God. Repentance is in response to truth. Where did that truth come from? It came from right here. Right? This, This servant right here is teaching This servant right here is correcting. He's working on getting truth into the mind of the person before they repent. He is being used by God to put truth in place so that when God acts and grants repentance, there is something to know. So the first answer to the question, what's the role of the human agent, is that we put in place truth. We speak 
truth. God doesn't put the truth in place by whispering it into their souls. God brings repentance by opening their eyes, giving them their senses to see truth that we put there. That's the first thing to see. Second thing to see is that it evidently matters that we put it there with some measure of competence because it says able to teach, not just a clumsy teacher, but an able, an apt, sometimes translated apt to teach, or correcting opponents. In other words, if they come up with with counter arguments in their unrepentance, we don't say, oh, well, the Lord's going to give you light someday, and so I don't have to give you any answers for your objections because your eyes are just not yet open. That's not the way it works. We correct our opponents. So this correcting here and this aptness here means there's some competence in handling the truth. And the third thing to notice, and this is probably um, as important, if not more important, than the competence, is that there are these spiritual or moral qualities that Paul says the teacher, the servant, needs to have. Number one, let's put them in a different color just so they stand out. Not quarrelsome. That would be a peacemaker, uh, somebody who's not easily angered, doesn't stir up strife, is trying to uh, bless people, not just argue with them, not quarrelsome, but kind or gentle or meek, patient when we are treated wrongly. So we don't say, well, these people are all blind, in a stupor, and they're drunken, so I'm not going to have anything to do with them. No, no. We patiently expect and endure evil. So uh, conciliatory, peacemaking, kind, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness or with meekness. So there are four of those, aren't there? Gentleness, patience, kindness, not quarrelsome. And so I would add over here to this list, love. Those traits of love, kindness, not quarrelsome, patience, gentleness. So now let's step back. Here's God Almighty. It's just amazing to me and so crucial in the pastoral ministry and in parenting our kids and in leading anybody out of darkness into light. So crucial. God is the decisive giver of repentance. We know that's what they need. We can't make it happen. They can't make it happen apart from God. And it's repentance that leads to a knowledge of the truth. And here we are giving them truth by correcting them and, and teaching them, even though we know that they've lost their senses. They can't even deal with truth, but we're giving it to them, and we're giving it to them in a conciliatory way, in a kind way, and a patient way, and a gentle way, in the hope and in the prayer that God will grant them repentance. So my conclusion is that, yes, indeed, God is sovereign in the granting of repentance, but oh no, never, never, never should we draw the conclusion, well, if God is sovereign and granting repentance, I'll just fold my arms, sit in my living room, watch my videos, and uh, let him figure out how he can bring all those blind people out there in the world or in the church out of their captivity to Satan, because I'm surely not strong enough to do anything with the devil, and I can't grant repentance, and I can't make a knowledge of the truth. All of that is demonic reasoning. The Bible says the Lord's servant is crucial. The Lord's servant is essential in God's doing this. Here's maybe a way to say it. God um, makes the objects of the miracle of repentance. He makes the objects, that's, that's this Lord's servant here, 
He makes the objects the miracle of the miracle of repentance. He makes them the agents of the miracle of repentance. So never, never assume that because God grants repentance, the Lord's servant is negligible. He's not negligible. His essential. What a calling we have. He sends us, as it says in Acts 26, 18, he sends us to open the eyes of the blind.